Well, welcome to the International Word Center Church. We're here today to bring to you a fresh word from God, something to live by, something to win in life, something to live before God with, something that will fuel you up with faith, strong faith in God and all his promises and that you can receive and take hold of and lay hold of everything that God has given you. You have an inheritance in Christ. Wherever there's a death and there's a will, the will is enacted. We're in the new will and the new covenant, the new will and testament. We're under the new will. Jesus left us an inheritance. You need to know what you have so you can act in it, act on it, receive it and walk in it and quit letting people, the devil or yourself talk you out of your inheritance. Hi, my name is Rick. And on behalf of Helen, my wife, thank you for joining us today at the International Word Center Church. And we believe that you will walk away better than you sat down to listen because God's word is powerful. God's word is able to change you, rearrange you, make you into a totally new person. So join us every week at the, on Thursdays and Sundays for a fresh upload. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be alerted. If you're looking someplace to join uh, a church, you don't have a family, a home church that you call your own, we welcome you to come join us. Right now we're meeting here virtually uh, on the website and upload of videos to YouTube, but sign up at our newsletter and we'll be sure to uh, let you know when we get back to getting together and fellowship face to face, person to person. But today we're going to continue on our teaching. We've been teaching on uh, for the last several weeks on Thursday's uploads. And the subject is the power of thoughts. But before we do, let's offer, let's offer up a word of thanksgiving and prayer to Father God because without him, we can't do anything. So we're totally dependent on God for every good thing that's in our life. So God, we just thank you and praise you, God, for all the good and beneficial things that you've allowed into our life. We thank you for everything from salvation, for forgiveness of all our sins, to healing of our bodies and health in our bodies and soundness of mind. We thank you, God, for our home and our families. We thank you, Father God, for our jobs and provision. We thank you, thank you God, for your divine protection in every area of life. And we just ask today, God, that you would speak to our hearts, open up our ears, open up our eyes, that we can hear and see what you're saying, open up our mind, that we can come to know you more intimately and become better acquainted with you. So, Father, we're just asking God for a word from you, from your heart to my heart, the teacher, and to the hearts of the listeners. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And God, we also ask that the gifts of the Spirit would flow, that, that it's timeless. When God does something, it's timeless. So you may be listening to this video six months, six years after it was recorded, and God can speak to you today. So stay tuned as we continue to teach on the subject of the power of thoughts. Amen? Again, if you... Uh, praying and asking God, what should you do with your finances to further his righteous cause? Consider being a supporter, a partner with us. You can do that one time occurrence or reoccurring just by clicking on the donate button. Again, thank you who have given and who continually give to support us. So let's get into the word today. Are you ready for some good word? Are you ready to eat? So prepare to hear today. I want you to listen to the words that flow from my heart, from my lips, to your ears, to your heart, listen with the, listen to it with the intent to do and understand, to understand and do it. Amen. Because it's the doer of the word is the one that is blessed. So we've been, ta we've been talking about the power of thoughts and how powerful our thought life plays in our Christian life or any, anybody's life. But we as believers are talking about our born again, save life. It is imperative that you spend a lot of time and major on your thought life because that's the, that's the battlefield of the enemy. If he can get into your thought life, he can influence your actions. He can influence your inactions. Uh, he can influence your attitudes, your, your emotions. He can influence you physically, relationally, because you cannot do anything until you first think it. And we said when it comes to the word of God and learning to think like God by renewing your mind, amen, with the word of God that Romans 12 and 2 tells us to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We found when we renew our mind with God's way of thinking, the way he thinks, what he calls 
in or out, good or bad, sinful or righteous, whatever way God thinks is the way we want to learn to think. We want to be like Jesus. We want to follow in his footsteps. Jesus said, you can't be above the master, but you can be like him. Amen. And the one scripture says, so as he is, so are we in this world, in, in the earth right now. We're being conformed to the very image of God's son. And that takes place through the thought life, through the continual renewing of your thought life, of rejecting thoughts that are not of God or from God and accepting the thoughts that are from God. Amen. So the word of God is like this little sword you see sticking out here. The word of God is like a sword of the spirit. Amen. It'll cut to pieces the thoughts of the devil. So you got to do something. And we talked about that last week, how you take control of your thought life. And we're going to continue this week. But before we do, we'll do a little bit of review so we can pick up where we left off for those who haven't listened to the whole series. But I, I admonish you to go back and listen to everything that we've been taught because it will revolutionize your life to learn how to take control of your thought life because thoughts are powerful. When your thoughts will enable you to know the will of God. If you've been struggling and had challenges in your life of knowing the will of God in Romans 12 and two, it tells us that when we can renew our mind and, and not allow it to be conformed to the culture that we live in, then we can prove what is the good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Also, the power of your thoughts will transform you. It says, be ye not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you're having struggles and challenges in areas of your flesh or struggles and challenges of being a doer of the word of God, you're not, you need to love more. You be, need to be more gentle and kind. You need to get a hold of your anger or your temper. Amen. Come on. You need to walk in peace and joy. You need to walk in gentleness and all those things. It's a way of thinking. You can say, and the word backs it up. And for review times, we don't have time to go all over it again. But walking in the spirit is a way of thinking. Walking in the flesh is also a way of thinking. So the power of thoughts can determine who you are. You are what you think. The one scripture in Proverbs says, so as a man thinketh, so is he. Not only that, thoughts are the power, are, are, are powerful into this truth that how many of you want to be able to be led by God, led by the spirit of God? If you want to be a genuine son of God, in Romans, it says, in Romans 8, it says, many that are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God, or the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. In order to be led by the Spirit of God, you are going to have to get a handle over your thought life. It's because it's through our inward witness, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirits, which comes to us in the form of thoughts, and if we can't learn to get a hold of our thoughts and, and value our thoughts or realize thoughts are powerful, you can wind up not being led by the spirit of God, but being led by the flesh or even wrong spirits. So thoughts are powerful. They're not just something you need to let come in your head and go out of your, out of your mind here and there. Amen. The thoughts you choose determine who you will become or who you already are. When you get born again now, your mind did not get regenerated. It did not get saved. Your spirit got born again or regenerated or made righteous. Now you have to learn to get your mind to get in agreement with your born again spirit. If you want to see manifestation of walking like a child of God, walking in this righteousness that God has already imputed to you, given to you, amen, you've got to learn and understand how powerful your thought life is how powerful thoughts are. Amen. And we talked about that the way thoughts are delivered to us are, that's not the only ways, but two major ways is that words are thought carriers and pictures are images are thought carriers. We think in pictures. Amen. If I say big black dog, you don't see spelled out big black dog. Well, you might have just then because I said it and you got a picture of alphabets, big bat, black dog. But if I just say big black dog, whatever it is in your archives of a big black dog, or you might create your own. Amen. You see a picture of a big black dog and you've heard the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. So we have to put a no-go go gauge over our thought life 
when it comes to what words we allow come into our ear gate or a reading into our eye gate or out of our mouth, out of our mouth gates, or what pictures we set before us. Because these are the things that are shaping you and shaping your thought life. And as we said, thoughts are powerful. If you don't put a governor on what you allow to come into your mind through thoughts or pictures or images, you can be fighting and trying to be something that God has called you to be and be aiding the very things that are your adversaries from keeping you from being it by feeding on the wrong things. We talked about some of the things you can feed on wrong is wrong books, wrong people you hang out and fellowship with, movies, come on, ideology, philosophies, people speaking, sometimes wrong preaching. If you don't go and search out the word yourself and not just take it, and say, well, yeah, this is a church I've been going to for 30 years. This is a church my mom and grandma went to. No, people can change. Uh, denomina denominations can change. Uh, so you need to do due diligence, as the scripture says, uh, that you need to be a workman, rightly dividing the word of God, studying the word of God for yourself so that you will be a workman that's not ashamed. Amen. Because God's going to look to you. Yeah, people will be held accountable that teach wrongly. But you, my brother, my sister, your responsibility is to make sure what you're hearing is in agreement with God's word. And you can do that by simply reading the word of God for yourself and studying the word of God for yourself. Amen. And last week we talked about the struggle or we talked about how to take control of your, your thoughts. We use the analogies that you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop a bird from building a nest in your head. You can't keep a dog or a cat from walking by you, but you don't have to sit, get down, sit down and invite it over and start feeding it food and petting it. Come on. And also we talked about another analogy about thoughts. Just because something goes past you, it doesn't mean you have to stop and take uh, several pictures, click, click, click of it. In other words, when a thought comes, it's not a sin or you haven't entered into wrongness or allowing something wrong in your life just because a thought comes. It's not wrong to be temp tempted. It's wrong to yield to it. So we talked about last week, you got to put on the full armor of God. And in particular, two things we said without going over it all again, but you can go back and read it yourself in Ephesians 6. We talked about the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. You've got to recognize that you can think on whatever you want to think on, that you've been saved. You've been born again. You have salvation. You've been given authority and power over all the powers of the enemy. Amen. You've been given a power and authority over all demons. You can cast down thoughts. You can reject thoughts in a number one way is by loading your mouth like Jesus did our Lord and Savior. Loading your mouth with the word of God and speaking it will chase off wrong thoughts. Amen. If I told you to count to 10 and then ask you your name, you could not keep counting to 10 and say your name at the same time. Amen. You would have to stop thinking one, two, three, think counting to yourself, you know, not out loud, but counting in your mind, one, two, three, four, and then it stop and say out loud your name, try it. You can't do it. And then when you couple it with the power of the word of God, it will cast down strongholds. It will bring into subjection every image and thought that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Amen. So we want to pick up where we left off talking about taking control of your thought life. Uh, let me say this before we go into a little scripture. Uh, one of the key things as a believer that you're going to have to shake off if you have it on you and you're going to have to put on, you're going to have to become aggressive, violent. The scripture says the, the kingdom of God suffered violent and the violent taketh by force. What that's saying is there's a war going on. We're in the war zone. This is not the time to chill out, relax, and just think about how long you can work and retire and don't do anything but what you want to do. No, you're in a war zone spiritually. And if you take that attitude like the culture we're in, uh, you, you can get wrong thought and you can begin to drift away from your salvation. Yes, you can drift away from your salvation. Go back. We'll get into it someday. But the he book of Hebrew talks about it quite a bit that, you know, you can lose out. Even Paul talked about some people that once had tasted of the good things of God, of the Holy Spirit. And then they wanted they love the world. They want to go and do things in the world more than they wanted to 
do the things of God. So that's another teaching for a whole nother day. But what I'm saying is in order for you to win this battle, to win this war, to, to keep thoughts that are so powerful and affect your life so much on a spiritual level, on a mental level, on a physical le level, on a health level. I mean, your thoughts affect every part of your life, but you're not going to be able to take control of your thought life by being passive. You're going to have to contend with your flesh and handle it roughly. You're going to have to discipline yourself and not be passive. You can't be passive about this thing. You're going to have to get a little grit. Somebody say, amen. Say, get some grit. Turn to your neighbor. Say, get some grit. I didn't say grits. I said grit without the S. Amen. We can get some grits later. Amen. Uh, I'm making myself hungry. But grit means basically you got to get some tenacity about you, some persistence. You can't be passive. You can't just idly sit by and see how things going to happen. You can't be in your canoe and put your paddle in the boat on a current, a river running pretty swift and hope that things going to turn out right when your destination is upstream. Come on. As a believer, our destination is against the current. The world is going this way and we need to go that way. So you can't just passively sit in your canoe with your paddle on your lap waiting for God to do something. God has given you everything that you need to fight the enemy, to subdue your flesh, to take control of your thought life. And he expects you to stand up, put on the full armor, gird on your sword, put on your helmet and raise it up and he will empower you to fight. But you've got to engage. You've got to choose to pick up your sword, which the Holy Spirit, Spirit will help you to weld. Are you listening to me? So you play a huge part. And that's what we want to talk about with the time we've got left today. So on that note, let's turn to Second Peter. Second Peter, the first chapter. And beginning at the first verse, give you a few moments to get there. Hopefully you got your notebooks. Amen. Uh, taking notes. If not, you can come back and listen to this later. The beauty of uploading it. We had started thinking about doing something live stream, but uh, opted for a recording it so it can live on and you can listen to it again and again. And people in the future can listen to it. You can refer people to listen to it. Maybe, you know, somebody that's struggling with their thought life. Amen. Uh, just tell them to go listen to some of this teaching as well as take advantage of some of the other ministering gifts that we host here on the website under watch and listen. Amen. And go to their websites and just get full of the word of God so that you can be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. So second Peter out of the Amp Amplified Bible, first verse, first chapter, beginning at the first verse, it says, Simon Peter, a servant, apostles, a special messenger of Jesus Christ to those who have received obtain an equal privilege of like precious faith with ourselves in and through righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, we all this, we're, in, we're all in this together. And then he goes on to say, may grace, God's favor, or God's willingness to give you his ability and his peace, which is perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts. That's a long way of saying peace. You don't, you're doing well. Amen. You're doing good. You got prosperity. You're free from sickness and disease. You have no free. No, you have no fears. You're free from all fears. You're free from all agitating passions and moral conflicts. That's peace. Amen. And this Paul is saying, I'm praying that you get God's help and that you have God's peace. And it be multiplied to you in the full personal, precise and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. Verse three, for his divine power. Come on. This is the part I want you to get for his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full personal and knowledge of him who has called us by and to his own glory and excellent virtue. God has given us everything that we need to be like him, godliness and for life. Amen. So in life, we have challenges in our thought life and our thought lives are so powerful. We talked about it last week that the strategies of the devil is to make roads into your thinking so that he can develop strongholds, patterns of thinking, ways of thinking that all he has to do is make a suggestion and it thought it calls the ball to roll so to speak, and you automatically begin to think in this vein or that vein. But God is telling us here in Peter, first Peter, the first chapter that he has given us everything we need to live and be like him. 
Let's go on. Verse four says, by means of these, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceeding great promises so that through them you may escape by flight from the moral decay, rottenness and corruption that is in the world because of covetousness, lust and greed and become shares, partakers of the divine nature. We have everything we need to win the battle in life, to win the battle in the thought life, to take control of this powerful central uh, strategic point that God needs access to and control over. And he controls it as we yield to him. The enemy, the devil of the enemy of our soul, the devil and all his cohorts, they won't wait for you to yield. They will bombard you. They will do a home invasion. They will try to kick down the door. They will try to put pressure on you. Amen. To think a certain way, but God waits for us to yield to him and invite him in and he will help you. Is right here is telling us in verse four in first Peter, uh, sec, uh, the first Peter, second Peter, I'm sorry, the first chapter and the fourth, fifth, fourth verse that he has given us the ability to become shares of his divine nature, his DNA to be like him. We can live and be like Jesus. Jesus was the prototype. He came and showed us how we can live. We can live free from sin. We can live power and authority over the devil, over sickness and disease, over the curse, all the misfortunes that have come into planet Earth because of sin. And it begins with your thought life. Thoughts are so powerful. If you don't get a hold of what you're thinking about, you can't have faith for this. If you don't get a hold of what you're thinking about, you can't walk in this. You won't yield to this because you won't be thinking about it. I know that's simple, but it's so true. Let's go on. So here's what we've got to do. Amen. We play a part. It's the will of God is not automatic. God will never take over or usurp authority over your will. You have to freely yield. You have to freely choose everything that God has given us and promised us from salvation, uh, from asking for wisdom, for healing, for protection. You have to ask for it. One scripture in James says you have not because you ask not. Or sometimes you can ask for the wrong purposes. So moving into what things do you do for this very reason? Verse five, we're still in second Peter, the first chapter, verse five, it says, for this very reason, this is something you have to do, choose to do, adding your diligence to the divine promises. You've got to add diligence to the promises of God. God has promised us that he's given us authority over the devil, over sin. He's given us authority over sickness, over disease. He's redeemed us from the curse of the law. He's given us a lot of promises. But in order for you to lay hold of these promises and also walk in and access and draw from the divine nature of God, that spiritual force of God, that Zoe life, that God kind of life, you have to add diligence. As we were talking about earlier, you cannot be passive. You've got, got to be diligent. You say, well, I can't be. You can. You're already diligent. You're just diligent in certain areas you choose. Your diligence to get to supper, come on, and eat on time. You're diligent to get your sleep. You're diligent to get up in the morning and go to work. You're diligent in areas where you choose to. And there's a fight to be diligent. But God will help you. But the first step has to be yours. I give an example that God often reminds me. It's sort of like when Peter was in the boat and Jesus uh, was on the water walking. And Peter said, is that you bid me to come? The word, the help, the grace, the enabling power was given when Jesus said, come. But if Peter would have never put his foot out of the water, amen. The power to walk on, on, on the water would have never come up under Peter's foot and allowed him to walk on water. I'm a firm believer that a part of walking by faith is acting on your faith. That word where it says in Romans 10, 17, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. A lot of times I've seen believers, let's say like in the case of healing, I've seen people say, yeah, I believe God, uh, God, please heal me. Amen. And then they sit there, they watch TV and do this and do that and don't 
step out and act on the word. You say, well, how do I act on the word? What does the word say in Proverbs? It says the word of God is medicine to all your flesh. Keep it in the midst of your heart and it'll be medicine to all your flesh. The word of God tells you that if you declare a thing, you can believe if you receive and say to this mountain, come on, if you say something, say to this mountain, it shall be removed. Believers don't act on the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you really do a word study on that, it's not just hearing the word of God, but it's then acting on the word of God. That word hearing in the King James is uh, translated hearken. And to hearken means the purpose of hearing something with the intent to do what is said. So a lot of times we don't act on the word. And James goes on to say faith without works or better translation would be corresponding action is dead. It's inoperative. It doesn't produce anything. You might say, I may have seed in my hand, apple seeds in my hand. I can believe I got apples in my hand, apple trees, and it'll produce a harvest. But as long as I keep the seed in my hand, I will have no harvest. Works, faith without Putting the seed in the ground and watering it will not produce a harvest. So things are true. If you want to tap into what we're talking about today, where you can partake of God's divine nature, his life, that where you can receive the help that God will give you to take control over your thought life so that your life can be transformed and you can be like God and like Jesus. Come on, that you can take control of your thought life and that you can know without a doubt what the will of God is for your life, that you can take control of your thought life. Amen. And know without a shadow of a doubt what the Holy Spirit is prompting and leading you to do. But it all begins in your thought life, but you play a vital part in it. It goes on to say, add, adding your diligence to the divine promises, employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue. Virtue is excellence, resolution, Christian energy. In some translation, it's, it's uh, uh, translated as power. Amen. In exercising virtue, develop knowledge, intelligence. You need to study the word of God. You need to get the word of God into your spirit and into your mind in abundance. And verse six goes on to say, in exercising knowledge, develop self-control. And in exercising self-control, develop steadfastness, patience, uh, endurance and in exercising steadfastness or endurance, develop godliness, piety, and in exercising godliness, develop brotherly affection, and in exercising brotherly affection, develop Christian love. For as these qualities are yours and increasingly abound in you, they will keep you from being idle or unfruitful unto the full personal knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you develop these qualities in your life by being diligent and acting on developing the things we just read. Go back and read them again. Do a word study on them so you get a fully knowledge, full knowledge of what you're looking to develop and the Holy Spirit will help you. God will help you develop these because they're key in changing the way you think. Because it goes on to say in verse 9, For whoever lacks these qualities is blind spiritually, short-sighted, seeing only what is near to him and has, come, and has become oblivious to the fact that he was cleansed from his old sins. Because of this, brethren, be all the more solicitous and eager to make sure to ratify, to strengthen, to make steadfast your calling and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble or fall. Do you want to get to the place in your life, you never stumble or fall. You never fall into sin. You never act up or do something out of the character of a believer. You've got to begin with your thought life. And then as you develop your thought life, you need to add diligence. You need to add uh, being uh, self-control. You need to add to all the things we just read, get more knowledge. Amen. And these are, this is a, this is a part you play, but here's the good news about it won't leave you hanging there. God said you don't have to do it in your own strength. Amen. It's no different than you get in an automobile today. You don't have to take yourself a hundred mile trip under your own strength and power, but you do have to get into the vehicle, have working knowledge of how the vehicle works, have a pretty good idea of what direction you need to go. And then you just turn the key broom, and take the steering wheel and steer the car. 
you play a vital part in order the power of that automobile to take you to your destination. Now, for you in a spiritual walk and gaining control over your thoughts, the Holy Spirit is the power you need. Amen. But this is what it says in Philippians 2, one of my go to scriptures in life. Uh, I have a lot of them, but this is the main one. One of the main ones always comes up because I always am reminded by God, by his spirit, by his word, that I'm not by myself. If you want to take control of your life, become more assertive and more aggressive about getting self-control and diligence and the things we read up in first in second Peter. The first chapter, develop those things in your life. And that re just requires your will. And when you step out of the boat, the power of the Holy Ghost will be there to help you do what God has told you to do. But until you step out of the boat, there's no power there to do it. A lot of people are waiting for God to do it for them. But God requires you acting on the word of God, you acting on the faith of God. So if you, my brother, my sister, are ready to get control of your thought life, and begin to renew your mind so that you can think the thoughts of God and be like him and be transformed into the very image of his son. Remember this as we get ready to close in Philippians, the second chapter, verse 12 and 13. It says, therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions. So now, not only with the enthusiasm you showed in my presence, but much more because I am absent, work out, cultivate carry out to the goal and full complete your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling self distrust with serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ. In verse 13, it goes on to say, though, you need to do all these things. You have to engage your will. You have to be not passive, but actively engaging your will, making firm choices of where you spend your time, what you allow to go in your eyes, what you talk about, what you listen to, who you hang around. You've got to actively develop these things. But here's the good news. Not in your own strength, the Amplified Bible says, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing, creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Now, if I would say paraphrase that scripture with several different translations that are in my heart and mind, it, the, the scripture is saying here, when you choose to step out of the boat, the power of God, the Holy Spirit will help you to self-discipline. The Holy Spirit will come to your aid and help you and strengthen you to resist wrong thoughts. The Holy Spirit, the very divine nature of God will energize your spirit, man. Come on and cause you to be Superman, if you will, or Superwoman. In other words, it's saying that God is working in you, giving you right desires and giving you the power, the energy, come on, to do them. That's good news. Somebody shout hallelujah. We can't lose with the weapons we use. Our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down all imaginations. God will work with you if you'll work with him. If you'll choose his ways of doing and being right, amen, he will come to your aid and undergird you. Come on. He's the thrust behind you. Amen. You just got to stick your arms out like wings and let the Holy Spirit. You got to choose to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. And that's when the Holy Spirit goes into work. God will not do it for you, but he will give you all the help, all the aid, all the strength, all the comfort, all the guiding, all the truth. Come on. He'll give you everything you need to win. Matter of fact, he's already given it to you, but it's not enacted or it's not received until you begin to act on your faith. Amen. Thoughts are powerful. Thoughts are who you are or who you will become. Thoughts determine what you have possessed or what you will possess. Your thoughts, my thoughts are powerful. So we need to let God thoughts become our thoughts. And then we will walk in and have the plan, the will of God in our life. Somebody say amen to that. And in closings in Proverbs 16 and three, another one of my favorite scriptures. It says in the Amplified Version, roll your works upon the Lord, commit and trust them wholly to him. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so your plans will be established and succeed. And the TPT translation, that same verse, Proverbs 16 and 3, 3, 
Proverbs 16 and 3, it says, Before you do anything, put your trust totally in God and not in yourself. Then every plan you make will succeed. Your thoughts are powerful, so yield your mind to God and let his thoughts become your thoughts, and then you will become all that God has ordained and destined for you to come become and destined for you to do. Amen. I hope you got something out of that today. I know you will if you listen with an open heart and an open ear. If not, come back and listen to it again over and over. Get the Bible out and get the scriptures and do a do a study. Do a study along with this teaching. Um, again, let's close today with a prayer, a prayer of salvation. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, because it's true, there's not many ways to God. There's only one way to God. If you're a Christian, you can't think that there's more than one road to God. For the word of God declares, and I believe what God says over anybody, amen, I'm not going to be politically correct because this is a life, eternal life, an eternal death uh, situation here. It says the only way to God is through Jesus Christ because there was only one payment that can satisfy judgment for mankind sinning against the true and living God, and that's a soul had to die. Since we were already dead in our sins, we couldn't die for ourselves. I couldn't die for you and you couldn't die for me. We were all on death row. We were all locked up in prison together and had the same sentence. So we could not help each other. But there was one man called Jesus on the outside. God sent him his only begotten son that was righteous and had never sinned in his life. And he said, I'll take their place, set them all go, open up the prison doors, set them free from the tyranny of the devil and from sin and ultimate eternal death, separation from God forever. He took our place and not only just took our, our punishment for sin to be separated from God, but he also took the effects of sin. He redeemed us from the misfortunes because of sin, of sin, sickness, disease, and poverty. Come on. If you believe that in your heart and you say this prayer with me, God said he will save you. In other words, he will declare you righteous and deliver you from the powers of darkness and bring you over up under the rulership of Jesus, our Lord. So pray with me right now. Say, Father God, I believe that I am a sinner and I purpose to repent and change. Repentance means change to be what you've called us to be and live the way you've called me to live. I ask that you forgive me now of all my sins. And I believe Jesus paid the price for my sins, that he died in my place and you raised him from the dead. And he lives evermore at your right hand in Jesus name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you believe it in your heart, amen, just begin to rejoice right now and thank God for salvation, that you've been forgiven of all your sins and cleansed from all unrighteousness, that you can now fellowship with God. But now you need to find you a good church, a good place to come and fellowship, amen, so that you can grow up in things of God and be taught the things of God. That's why it's called being born again. Your spirit man has been regenerated and now just like a baby has to learn everything, you need to learn how to live all over again because the way the world teaches us is not the way God wants us to live. So join us here on right now on Thursdays and Sundays and make this your church until we open up the physical doors once again. But I do want to pray with a couple of other people that's out there today. Maybe you've been born again and saved and you were living a right life and practicing righteous, but you went back to a sinful lifestyle. I want to pray with you and you want to want you to rededicate to the Lord today. Come on, pray with me. This is time. Don't put it off. Time is running out. Amen. And you don't want to die without making your things right with God. You don't want to be separated from God for eternity. So pray with me right now. Come on. God loves you so much. That's why he's got me here. And that's why he's got you here. So pray this with me. Say, Father God, I take you at your word that you said, if I sin, you would forgive me because you're true to your nature, that you're a merciful God. Your mercies are new every morning. I ask that you forgive me. I confess that I have sinned before you. I ask that you forgive me of my sin and I purpose to repent, change my ways of thinking and doing and speaking and speaking and living and come and learn how to live the way you want me to live. I thank you now, God, that you've forgiven me and you've cleansed me from all unrighteousness. I thank you for restoring me now in Jesus name. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, God's forgiven you. He's forgotten about it. You can do like Jonah and pick up just where you left off. You know, Jonah ran from God and went the opposite direction. And God 
redirected him, and when he redirected him, he was right where he was supposed to be. God will redeem the time for you. Don't feel like you messed up and missed out. God can, God, not you, but God can redeem the time and put you back where you should have been if you had obeyed him all up to this day. But now let's ask God for a fresh and filling of his spirit. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's your time right now. And one of the evidences, the initial evidence, like we always say, baptism in water, you get wet, baptism in the Holy Spirit, as you yield to him, he will give you syllables in a language that you don't learn. The Bible refers to it in some translation as tongues, but that word tongues just means language. The Holy Spirit will give you the supernatural ability to speak in a language, not to men, not to me, not to your person next to you, but to God. And when you do that, you're talking directly to God in a language that's perfect, that's acceptable to God, that lines up perfectly with his will. And the word of God tells us in 1 John, the fifth chapter, that when we ask anything according to the will of God, we know he hears us and we have the desired petition or whatever it is you're asking for. And not only that, when you yield to the Holy Spirit, he energizes you in your spirit. He strengthens you. He builds you up. So just lift your hands now and say, Father God, I want everything you have for me. I want to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. I want a fresh and filling. I want a, for another level of influence and of your spirit on my spirit. So I ask now, fill me, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. I ask now in the name of Jesus, I covet, I earnestly desire the gifts of the Spirit to operate in my life. And I yield to you now, Holy Spirit, and I ask that you would empower me now to speak in that heavenly language in Jesus name. Amen. If you prayed that for the first time, take some time out uh, after watching this video and just begin to worship the Lord. Thank him for all his mercies and his goodness and all the things he's done in his life. And just begin to yield to him. Yield your spirit, yield your mind. And as you sense those syllables in your spirit coming up, amen, they won't come from your natural uh, brain, mind, it'll come from your spirit out of your innermost being just to begin to vocalize it. The Holy Spirit will help you. Jesus said, or the word of God said, Jesus said in Luke 11, uh, 13, I believe it is that if you around there, if you know how to give good gifts, how much more will the heavenly father not give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? If you ask for bread, he won't give you a rock. If you ask for a fish, he don't throw a snake on your plate. You just ask for baptism in the Holy Spirit the person of God that created this whole universe will come and be in you and be with you and in you and help you to navigate this life and do the will of God. Amen. So thank you again for joining us here at the International Words in the Church. We look forward to the next time we get together with you uh, by video as well as in person. Keep us in your prayers. Amen. Again, remind if you, uh, praying about it or ask God, just donate. We need all the help we can get. We'll put it to good use for righteous causes. And we know that God will do great things for you. God blesses the giver. He doesn't bless the withholder. God is looking for you to help further righteous causes. So to next time, remember that who the son sets free is free indeed. And we are all free to move around the world to do the will of God in Jesus name. Be blessed. Shout it out one more time. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things.